My name is Dr. P. Sedraman Shivakumar, Senior Scientist at the Central Tuber Crops Research Institute, Government of India at Trivandrum. So in this module, I am going to deal about the audiovisual lights, meaning, definition and classification. Hello all. Just imagine a dark night without traces of light grip over by the pin drop silence. A darkness which dissolved all physical forms of living and non-living things into the world. A long mysterious silence questions the presence of any active life. When the mystery prevails over the night in a distant land, a ray of light emerges from the sky saying, Hello world, let's send the night into the darkness. The light suddenly brings life into the world, make the rooster crow, let the birds fly and make the human beings work. Welcome to the world of audiovisual aids, a world filled with magical moments which we see, which we hear, which we touch we, and we experience to bring the newness into our life. This lesson explores the meaning, definition and classification of the audiovisual aids. At the end of this presentation, you will be able to describe the meaning of audiovisual aids, the history of audiovisual education, the objectives and purpose of using audiovisual aids in education, advantages and limitations of using audiovisual aids, and the methods of classifying the audiovisual aids. So, let's begin with a question What are the audiovisual aids? In very simple terms, these audiovisual aids or the communication devices or the tools which are used by the educators to provide the multi-sensory experience for the learners during the teaching. Multi-sensory experience means engaging the multiple human senses into the learning process to make it more interesting and motivating which leads to the concrete learning. Let's see what happens during the multisensory learning experience. When a person is encountered with a stimuli, for example a delicious food, he or she gathers information about the stimuli through multiple senses, through seeing, hearing, touching and sending them to the brain for further processing. The brain evaluates the sensory inputs by matching them with the past experience which are, which are called memories. After several rounds of communication between brain and the senses, the brain stimulates him or her to taste the food. The subject moves towards the food and consumes it and experiences it. The subject experiences the new food, its appearance, color, aroma, texture, taste along with its own evaluation of the food like, I like this food, it is very tasty and store those experiences as memories in his or her brain. Please remember, brain may either ask you to consume or reject the food. If the food is, is your favorite, the brain may induce salivary secretion on seeing the food. In the whole process signifies a multi-sensory experience which you can live through. So let's examine what the research says about the multisensory experience. About 83% of the human learning occurs after seeing or watching an object or event, while only the rest of the 17% happens through the other senses. Say about 11% by hearing, 3.5% through smell, 1.5% by touching and the rest 1% by tasting. A research conducted at the United States Department of Labor indicated that we tend to store the information six times more when it is presented through the visual aids compared to the traditional oral lecture. Please remember, a ray of light enlightens your understanding of the world by 83% which makes it permanent. I hope we have now pretty good idea about what are the different audiovisual aids and their role in enhancing the human learning through multisensory experience. I guess you may probably curious to know how a natural phenomenon of the audiovisual learning has come into the field of education. Now let's look into the history of audiovisual education. In the basis of audiovisual experience comes from the natural human instinct to communicate with other individuals or groups. 
for exchange of information, develop mutual understanding about each other with other members of the society and also to develop the personal and social relationships. The prehistoric cave painting are the earliest recorded forms of the human communication. Later, with the emergence of the agrarian civilizations, the writing system began to evolve as a means of exchange and to establish the ownership of land. The pictorial language of Indus script of Harappan civilization of India and Pakistan dated back to 3000 BC and cuneiform script of the Sumerian culture developed during uh, 4100 to 3800 BC or the ancient means of human communication. The Gurukul system of teaching which existed in the Indian subcontinent from the Vedic age that is 1750 to 500 BC till the British invasion is the ancient ways of educating children and youth in India. In the Gurukul system, the children learn science and life skills through learning by doing that is involving the maximum center our senses under the guidance of the Guru. The ancient Indian universities like Nalanda of 5th century AD and Taxila of 6th century BC, the education was imparted through group discussion, dramatization and through the clay modeling. In the western world, the elder sophists, the Greek freelance teachers of the 5th century BC are regarded as the ancestors of the educational technology. They used all technologies from statecraft to handicraft to impart the knowledge. During the Middle Age, the churches in Europe and Americas used a variety of visual aids such as colorful glass windows, candles and bells for imparting the religious education. A Czech philosopher, John Amos Comenius of the 15th century, is regarded as the founder of modern instructional technology. His illustrated children's book, Orbis Pictus, meaning that world in the picture, filled with 150 pictures of, for teaching Latin and science is still regarded as the most popular children's literature ever produced in the world. With the advent of the radio in 1895, 16mm motion picture projector in 1923, 16mm sound, mi sound movie projector in 1930 and television in 1926 have revolutionized the audiovisual communication. In the Western countries, the Ohio School of Air in 1929 and the State University of Iowa Educational Television Experiment of 1934 of the United States were the early experiments in audiovisual education. The traditional Indian folk arts like puppet shows, folk dances are extensively used to mobilize people during our India's independence moment. The satellite instructional television experiment of 1975-76 of Indian Space Research Organization and Gyan Darshan Educational Television Channel of IGNO in, 19, in 2000 and the EduStat program of ISRO in 2004 using the educational television were few notable efforts to use the mass media to impart the education in India. I believe that our journey into the past exploring the audiovisual experiences and experiments has enriched with us the historical development in the audiovisual education. Now let's begin to understand the meaning of audiovisual aids and their role in education. We already know that audiovisual aids are the communication devices that stimulate our senses to explore our environment and also makes the learning process more interesting motivating, reinforcing and effective. Defining audio visual aids is a tricky process as they are used in diverse environments to achieve a variety of objectives. In general, audio is a sound within the acoustic range available to the human being which are received through ears and interpreted in brain. The audio could be from a real life audio recording or a broadcast. For example, a scientific talk on rice diseases can be recorded on a CD or DVD and replayed in the farmer's group for creating awareness. Visuals are the things which we can see through our eyes. Visual aids help in displaying the facts and figures in a very simple and illustrative way. The photographs, 
posters, charts, drawings are the few examples of visual aids. The audio visual aids as we know are defined in several ways by the several people. According to Kinder James, the audio visual aids are any device which can be used to make the learning experience more concrete, more realistic and more dynamic. The definition focuses on the outcome aspect of the audio visual aids but their nature, what and which aspects are not described here. Another definition by Burton has added the what dimension into the process aspect to describe the audiovisual aids as sensory objects or images which initiate or stimulate and reinforce learning. A renowned educational scientist, Dr. Edgar Dale, viewed the audiovisual education as communication devices which, and described them as a multi-sensory materials which facilitate the communication of ideas between people and groups in various teaching and training situations. Rooted in the communication tradition, Dale's views established the multi-sensory nature of the human communication and its role of the audiovisual aids in stimulating the learning process. The learning process oriented view was advocated by Carter Good who defined the audiovisual aids as the aids which help in completing the triangular process of learning that is motivation, classification and stimulation. The supportive role of audiovisual aids in the learning process adds an instructional system design perspective to this learning. A very comprehensive definition of the audiovisual aids was proposed by McCone and Roberts which indicated that audiovisual aids are supplementary devices by which a teacher through utilization of more than one sensory channel is able to clarify, establish and correlate concepts and interpretations and appreciation. In another simple definition, Reddy 1993 defined audiovisual aids as an instructional device in which the message can be heard as well as seen, emphasizing its nature dimension without revealing its impacts on the learning. From a field practice view, the Food and Agricultural Organization has defined audiovisual aids as anything an extension agent uses to help to convey the message when communicating with the farmers. Though these definitions provide a multi-dimensional approach for defining the audiovisual aids, it's necessary to have our own view of the audiovisual aids. From the above definition, we can interpret audiovisual aids as the multisensory devices that help a teacher to make the learning experience more realistic, dynamic and interesting by helping him or her to interact with the learners to clarify concepts, motivate and understand and apply them to their situation and to reinforce the learning process. So when we understood the meaning of audiovisual aids, it's necessary to look into the various objectives for which the audiovisual aids are used in the learning process. The number one objective is to help the teachers to deliver a meaningful instruction by skillful integration of his or her teaching skills with the content. I'll say that the audiovisual aids provide various options to the teachers to use a combination of sensory experiences to supplement his traditional oral presentation. The second objective is to attract and hold the attention of the learners during the whole duration of the teaching learning process. The audiovisual aids can help to increase the attention span of the learners. In general, our attention span in any learning activity is just 20 minutes. The audiovisual aids can prolong this span by stimulating the learner to actively participate in the process. The other objective is to customize the learning experiences to the needs and abilities of the learners. Audiovisual aids can provide need-based information in a very simple and interesting way to match the learner's cognitive processing capacity. The other objective is to teach the complex concepts in a very interesting way. Preparation and use of audiovisual aids follow a scientific approach to maximize the learning. It helps to break down the complex information into simple facts and figures to present an easily understandable form. For example, a child is playing a max video game to learn about the basic arithmetic operations. During the game, 
the child is presented with various interesting puzzles which it tries to solve by actively engaging the visual, auditory and tactile senses. This process helps the child to learn complex numerical operations in a very simple and interesting way. The other objectives of using audiovisual aids in education is to show application and usage of theoretical knowledge into the real world. For example, a presentation on operant conditioning explains the human behavior as it influenced by the consequences of the behavior. The complex theory can be explained in, in inter, with interesting illustrations and animation to show the animal behavior so that the readers can understand the complex things in a simple way. To show the process of events which are difficult to be accessed in real life is another objective of the audiovisual aids. In this case, audiovisual aids can substitute the real things or a phenomenon. For example, a working model of a rail engine can help a child to learn about its operation which is impossible to observe in the real life. I hope that you understood the purpose and objectives of using the audiovisual aids in education. Now let us look into the various advantages and limitations of using audiovisual aids in education. When it comes to the advantages, the primary advantage of using audiovisual aids is to learn something which we cannot do it in other ways like for example perceptual learning. Perceptual learning is the process of learning the perceptual skills. For, for example, a simple discrimination that is a separating stones from your rice and to the very complex categorization like, like seeing relations among the evidences to solve a criminal case. Using a computer based audiovisual technology, Kelman and colleagues have developed multimedia perceptual learning modules to improve the mathematical skills of the students. The second advantage of audiovisual aids, it can capture and sustain the attention of the students in the class. The audiovisual aids like a video film or motion picture, the teachers can capture the attention of the learners by manipulating the appearance or disappearance of the objects like animations, adjusting their brightness and color and regulating their movements in the sc screen and they can also try to sustain their attention span beyond 20 minutes as this one we have already discussed earlier. The third advantage of using the audiovisual aids is that it can appeal to learners emotions and increase their motivation to learn. For example, an educational video about the suicide of the farmers and their causes will arouse emotions among the viewers and stimulate them to help the farmers to make a small effort to help them in marketing their produce at a reasonable price. The fourth advantage of audiovisual aids is the audiovisual based experience will prolong the retention of the learning and also aid in easy recalling. For example, a learner's hand of experience on the working model of a paddy harvester can help them to understand the process of scientific paddy harvesting in a more realistic way. The fifth advantage of audiovisual aids is that it can help in mass customization and personalization of the learning. The multimedia based educational modules, they can impart the learning experiences to a large number of people at the same time while meeting the individual's cognitive and affective demands in the learning process. The learners can learn at their own pace using the multimedia at a convenient time that maximizes the learning effectiveness besides reducing the cost and the time spent in the learning. For example, the multimedia learning modules can help the people to undergo training at any time, at any place without traveling for the distances. So it can also customize their capabilities and needs. The sixth advantage is the audiovisual aids make the learning simple, easy and interesting for the children. First few years of the child's life are the most fascinating where he or she learns through employing all senses. The audiovisual aids can offer a variety of experiences to stimulate their senses and engage them in activities. For example, learning toys 
can stimulate and motivate the children and also help them to learn fast. The seventh advantage is the audiovisual aids offer variety and flexibility to the teacher to impart the effective education. The teachers can choose any aid which suits their demand. For example, a simple flannel graph or flashcard could help to explain SRI system of cultivation of rice to the farmers. It eliminates the need for electricity for using the LCD projection systems in the village. They can do explain it in a very simple way. Though audiovisual aids are effective in delivering the instruction, they have few limitations. The audiovisual aids are either representation or indicator of the realities which can't be as effective as learning in the real life situation. For example, a specimen of cutla fish may help the learner to understand the morphology of the fish, but it can't teach them how the fish swims, swims and breathes. The audiovisual aid based instruction requires specialized skills on the part of the teachers. Effective use of audiovisual aids depend on teachers knowledge and skill in operating the aids, ability to choose the right method to match the teaching objective, etc. For example, integrating multimedia education in curriculum is a difficult task because it demands high initial investment, teachers expertise in using the computers in teaching and time taking for preparation of the computer based presentations. The third limitation is the students are often heterogeneous in nature who differs in terms of the cognitive abilities. Though audiovisual aids are effective in making the teaching learning process more interesting, they can cater, cater to the needs of the all need learners. For example, Colt's learning style model identified four learning styles of the learners in teaching visual, auditory, tactile and kinesthetic. An effective audiovisual aid should cater to the, all the needs of the learner uniformly and impart uniform learning. Delivering a quality instruction demand the use of a variety of audiovisual aids. Developing the audiovisual infrastructure is not only very expensive and the, audio, the organizations are always struggle to get adequate funds for strengthening their audiovisual infrastructure. A small extension office at a block level can't develop a quality audiovisual teaching materials without adequate funding from the state office. The audiovisual aids are classified into different types based on the purpose, form, abstractness of the message delivered. There are several ways of classifying the audiovisual aids, but let's focus only on the three methods. The first method is the classification based on the sensory form. In the first method, audiovisual aids are classified based on the sensory form, audio, visual and audiovisual. The audio aids communicate the message which can be heard, while the visual aids transmit messages which could be seen by the audience. The visual aids are classified again into two types, projected and non-projected aids. The projected visual aids are the pictures shown on a screen by using the machines like a film strip projector, slide projector, overhead projector or TV or VCR. Non-projector visuals are those aids which are used without any projection like photographs, drawings or the few examples of the non-projected aids. The audiovisual aids as we know transmit the messages that can be seen, heard. Various audiovisual aids are classified into, into three categories based as given in the table audio aids, uh, radio, audio recordings stored in TV, DVD, visual aids, as I said there are two types, non-projected and projected, non-projected aids are models, specimens, flannel graphs, photographs and the projected aids are like a film strips, slide projector and the audiovisual aids which combine both audio and visual forms like the motion pictures, video films, computer based multimedia learning modules, dramas and puppet shows. The other way of classifying the audiovisual aids is based on the message form. Western and crank components of the teaching material. The one is delivery system, the second one is the message and the third one is the condition of the abstractness. According to them, a delivery system is a physical form of the material which is nothing but a hardware. For, for example, a overhead transparency is a physical form 
and the overhead projector is a hardware form. According to them, the message represents the information communicated with the teaching materials, while the form indicates the abstractness of the medium. They classified the teaching material or audiovisual aids based on its concreteness to abstractness continuum as proposed by the Edgar Dale into the four major types. One is realia, imitations, illusions and symbols. According to them, realia is the most concrete form of the audiovisual aids while the limitation is a three-dimensional material which deliver less realistic stimuli than realia. For example, a specimen is a realia. A specimen is a part of a wheat leaf which helps the student from South India who has not seen the wheat plant at all which is more popular in North India to understand how a wheat plant looks like. A working model imitation of a rail engine which helps us to understand the pulling mechanism in a less realistic way and it explains only a part of the whole phenomena though it is not possible to see it otherwise. Illusionary materials like photographs are more abstract than the imitation where learning is just one dimensional and very limited. For example, a picture of a rice disease will show only a part of the plant without capturing its surroundings. Since the diseases are diagnosed by assessing various criteria like damage to the leaves, fungal growth at the base of the plant and horizontal spread etc., the photographs will supply only the limited information. The symbolic forms like words and symbols are very difficult to understand and they demand very high level of cognitive processing. So based on this classification, we can classify the audiovisual aids into realia, imitation of the realia, visual illusions and visual symbols, auditory illusions and auditory symbols, auditory and visual illusions and auditory and visual symbols, visual symbols and visual illusions and auditory symbols. The third way of classifying the audiovisual aids is based on their generation. The UNESCO Bulletin on New Methods and Techniques in Education distinguishes four generations of the educational media. The first generation media, second generation media, third generation and fourth generation media. So it classifies from the handmade charts, graphs, exhibits, models and handwriting materials as the first generation media, printed and illustrated texts, printed graphs and workbooks as a second generation media, photographs, slides, film strips, films, recording, video, radio and tele lectures in the third generation media and the television, programmed instruction, language laboratories and electronic and digital computers based multimedia in the fourth generation media. In this lesson, we learn about the meaning of audiovisual aids, the history of audiovisual education, the objectives and purposes of using the audiovisual aids in education, advantages and limitations of using audiovisual aids and the methods used for classifying the audiovisual aids. As I stated in the beginning, the world we live itself is an audiovisual wonder and we human beings have the ability to experience and interpret it through our senses. Let's appreciate the potentials of audiovisual aids in fostering quality learning. Thank you.